We're here at uh, the International Marbella Film Festival. The film Dorfman, as I say, 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. Now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to... Can, are you all right? Do you wanna... Well, look, I tell you what, we're going to put you on that side. You haven't got to walk so far, Sharon, OK? Right. There we are. Um, you see, we had a little problem with the microphone, so we're doing this like a sort of an outside interview. Uh, joining me now is a lady, her name is Jane Shenton, and I'll tell you what, um, uh, when I first saw her and she started telling me, she mentioned something about Capital Radio, and then it all came back to me. Now, what are you doing here, Jane? Well, I'm here representing our film, um, which is called Positively False, Birth of a Heresy, and it reflects our 25-year archive of the challenge to the virus AIDS hypothesis, um, which, I mean, we made 11 documentaries for Channel 4 and for uh, Sky News, and we've put them all together, 25 years worth. 60 hours were digitized to actually show the history behind the challenge to the fact that the science behind AIDS is completely wrong. Now, this shocks people when I say it, but it is completely wrong, and the scientists that I work with or reflect say that AIDS itself is not an infectious condition, neither is it sexually transmitted. It is simply that people, when they test positive, have a very high antibody profile. And the antibodies are said to be specific to five proteins said to be specific to AIDS. But those proteins are in all of us. And if we get very immune suppressed, say we have a very high risk, fast track drug taking lifestyle, say we have a lot of venereal disease or sexually transmitted diseases, say we're very poor and say a child has had malaria seven times before he's seven and in Africa, the pathogenic assault of dirty water all of that raises your antibody profile and you test HIV positive. Now, I'm not going to bore you by going into the whole detail, but the truth of the matter is that there was a big fight amongst Robert Gallo and Montagne as to who discovered HIV, right? And the whole concept of a retrovirus a sexually transmitted virus causing AIDS is considered to be wrong by many, many scientists now. There's a group called Rethinking AIDS. It has a thousand members. It has scientists all around the world. But the thing that really bothers me is that this HIV test, said to be specific to a virus, is only testing antibodies. And as I said earlier, antibodies are in all of us, all of these. So people are given a death sentence and they think they're going to die and then they're given highly toxic antiretroviral drugs and then they do die. Is it, uh, is it fair to say, and is it, I suppose it's something quite significant, that uh, when, it was, when it first came, um, the publicity surrounding AIDS and HIV, uh, when it really began to sort of uh, hit should we say, in the mid-80s when it started to happen, that, as you just said about the kind of drugs and the kind of treatments that were being uh, offered were, in fact, more damaging than they were um, cures. Absolutely right. A whole generation of young gay men died on the high doses of AZT. Not one survived. Well, we, know, we know of two, don't we? Because we were talking earlier on about uh, uh, Kenny Everett and, of course, uh, Freddie Mercury. Are these two... They're two Absolutely. Those are exact examples. They died of the side effects of AZT. Of course, they led a high-risk lifestyle. But, you know, this is the problem. And uh, it's, you know, we showed the film yesterday and some people said after it, they were absolutely amazed. They had no idea there was any doubt. Me included. <laughs> really? Before today? You, 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 you are. You, it's the popular perception of what you understand of, of what AIDS is and what and we say HIV positive AIDS, you know, all kicked off with monkeys in Africa or this. That, and, and there are so many misdirections, I think, through uh, the last uh, the last sort of 35 years of exactly what it what it is that uh, uh, needs to be done. And as we know today. Uh, the survival rates are much, much higher, and it's because of the understanding of, of what, in fact, is needed. Well, the survival rate is higher, but there are actually no cases of AIDS, hardly. It's called now HIV disease. And people have realized that their high-risk lifestyles were going to lead to big trouble. 
Um, so they've changed their lifestyle. Some people, not everybody, but then there's still people severely immune challenged in Africa. I mean, in Africa, there was something called slim disease, which basically existed long before HIV. And it makes you cachectic, it's called, when you just get thinner and thinner and thinner and you die. Now, there are these protease inhibitor cocktails out and they are like, they damp down like aspirin inflamed conditions in the body okay so they can be they're antimycotic anti-inflammatory and anti-bacterial but the problem here is that they're given for life because or until you die because it is thought that if you stop them the virus will get you now if you think of cancer chemo they don't give that for more than a period but with these drugs they give them indefinitely and if as I truly believe and the scientists I work with do, HIV is not the cause of AIDS, then uh, these people are getting massively toxic uh, doses of something which they will take until they die. So many misconceptions and misunderstanding about, uh, about what it is. Positively forced birth of a heresy, exposing the myths around HIV and AIDS, and it's been uh, nominated for Best Documentary Lucerne International Film Festival uh, last year, and it's been selected, of course, here for the Marbella International Film Festival, which is currently on. Uh, Joan, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you, and you're, you're part of uh, Yellow Productions, aren't you? No, uh, Andy Reese, who was the director. Andy Reese. I'm Meditel Productions, but, but Alan, I wanted to say I've heard about you for years. Well, I, I'm, I'm about to sort of say, because I'm going to move on here slightly, because uh, the name Joan Shenton, and those of you who remember Capital Radio many years ago, and, uh, and I've worked a bit with Tommy Vance, you, you sort of did a show with him, didn't you, in the early days of Capital? From the very first morning with Sir Richard Attenborough and Champagne and Kenny Everett and Dave Cash and Dave Simons. We were all there and we launched Capital Radio and I had a program called Swap Shop with Tommy Vance and we did that for a year and Kenny and Cash were in the very early morning. And I hear you were with the Pirates though. Yeah, very, very briefly, but I was, I was involved. I was more in the backroom production, and I was a teenager, and I did it for about uh, six months and moved on. But, of course, I met, uh, uh, I met Kenny Everett and Dave Cash at the Radlon sales offices in London, which well, that was before uh, Capital, well before the BBC, um, uh, back in the 60s, of course, when they were on Radio London. But I must also mention another thing. Before Capital Radio, now I'm going back like you, I was on the BBC World Service, Latin American service, and because I was born in Chile. And I used to be on a program with a young girl from Gibraltar called Maribel Oton. And she was Maribel and I was Marisol. And we were on a show called Ritmo de Londres con Juan Peirano. And it went out across the whole of Latin America. It, and it, we played the Beatles nearly all the time. It was so popular. <laughs> Joan, it's been lovely to talk to you. As I say, you and you, 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 you don't live in Spain. You live in England, don't you? Yeah, but I come every year to Marbella. I have for 30 years. And I, well, I, th I, think, I think we'll have to get you to come up to our studios and uh, do a guest spot and uh, tell us all. Talk about, talk about the, uh, the golden age of radio. I still think it was anyway. <laughs> when you didn't have computers sort of telling you what to do. Thanks, Alan. It's been lovely to be with you. And we didn't have computers. And I was delighted that I finally tracked you down to Talk Radio Europe. Well, that's nice of you. That's so, so sweet of you. And, of course, it's a, it is a very, very small world in some respects, isn't it? And as I say, Joan um, has got a, a very, very uh, impressive film here. Okay.